Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am here with Meredith Collins from Hookist. And we're going to get into what in the world is Hookist. It sounds really interesting, right? Anything that has the word hook in it is already going to hook you in. So this is going to be a tool that is going to help you guys not only get closer to your fans, but also be able to make a new income stream. That all sounds super intriguing, right? So let's jump into that. As soon as we find out a little bit about Meredith, like let us know. I saw your back background is very diverse. I also saw that you started out um, working at FAO Schwartz, which I actually am out, the fir- the minute I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter, I happened to have just landed in New York. And that was the first thing I did was go to FAO Schwartz and get her first stuffed animal. And she still has it because uh, it was so special. But that, that store is an incredible place to be. But you've yeah. done so many interesting and different things in relation to um, you know, the arts and stuff like that. So let everybody know a little bit about your background and how that led you to starting Hookist. Okay. So FAO Schwartz was when I, um, well, I was acting back in the day and that was my survival job. I was uh, among other things, the hula hoop girl at the top of the stairs. And I spent eight hours a day hula hooping. Oh my goodness. Did, did it start to hurt your hips after a while? <laughs> uh, I got really fit. Initially, the first time I did it, I was like, oh my God, I cannot move. Um, but all that uh, core action. Yeah. Oh, it was major core action. Yeah. And I mean, eventually I was able to do three on each arm three on my waist. And like, sometimes I could manage a foot, That's insane. you know, depended on how I was feeling. Yeah. But it was like, I mean, you do it for eight hours a day and it's, you're going to get good at it. Yeah. Um, so that was, you know, my survival job, one of the many, you know, survival jobs back when I was acting and, um, you know, I worked in the film industry. I was a camera person trying to avoid the life of being a starving actor mm-hmm. and um, but but always interested in the creative process. So that's, you know, like the one. Yes, it's a very diverse background, but that's the one theme through it all is like, you know, how do you know, I, that's what Hookist is. It's how do the magical people who actually know how to write songs do it? You know, like, how do you capture the zeitgeist and get like. 50,000 people or even 50 people to sing along with you. You know, like it's just to me the most amazing thing because I don't have a musical bone in my body. I, You know, I'm so glad you said that because a lot of times I have to convince artists that like people want to understand your process and they're like, oh. well, why? Why would they care? Like everyone can do this. I'm like, no, they can't. Like people are intrigued by the process. Totally, totally fascinated, totally it's magic. It's not just like, I mean, it's beyond fascinating. It's something that you go, I have no idea how to do it. So, you know, like I had, a, you know, my whole background is, uh, you know, a photographer, blah, 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 a lot of creative stuff. Um, but I ended up, you know, meeting a guy as we all, you know, do. And uh, he was, um, he's a musician and a music producer here in New York. And he produced for the Crash Test Dummies. He's from Winnipeg, Canada, where the dummies are from. Mm. And so over time, you know, like he was friends with Brad, the lead singer. And over time, you know, we got to know him. And then like- That with the insanely low voice, right? Oh, exactly, (laughs) exactly. You know, it's funny because I wasn't sure when when Terry first mentioned him to me, like, I was like, you know, you get them confused, like the guys with the long, dark hair. It's like, is it Anthony Kiedis? Is it Brad Roberts? I'm not sure which one. And because they looked alike and they had the same gorgeous hair. And uh, so one day Brad called Terry and Terry was across the room, my partner. And I heard Brad's voice 
through the phone across the room. And I was like, okay, I know who that is. <laughs> you know, because I can voice- now hear the song in my head. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> totally. So, um, and he's lovely and his wife's lovely. And so we got to be friends and, um, you know, I got to be, and I was always the person who was, you know, like I always go to the show and like at the Q and a after with the director and the actor mm-hmm. or whoever it is, like, I want to know, like, why did you write that? Like, what made you do that? What, you know, how, how did this come about? So that's always been my interest. And then when, you know, I was lucky enough to be friends with a rock star, I was able to ask, you know, the goofy fan questions that like everybody wants to ask. And he didn't, you know, I would slowly ask one or two questions, but he didn't mind. Mm -hmm. And then over time, you know, we talked about streaming and, you know, how artists were not, and you know, that's a crash test dummies. That's a really big band from the nineties. They sold 13 million records. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, streaming was not the same kind of income stream, you know? And uh, so we talked about that. And then at the same time, you know, social media was, you know, becoming a very clear thing that artists needed to participate in. And, um, one of the biggest artists of all time who I will, you know, he will remain nameless because I don't want to embarrass him, but put out a new record. And in order to promote it, he, his team offered fans the opportunity to play Ring Around the Rosy with an animated person, with an animated version of this person who is legendary, like one of the best of the best of the best. And you got a free download. And it was like, there has to be a more authentic way for artists to use social media. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, that's how Hookus came about, you know, because it was like, okay, what's more authentic than writing a song with your fans? And that's basically what we do. It's a global songwriting collaboration. And we look at it as a festival where we've just gotten to this point where we can um, hold many collaborations at the same time. So right now we have two, we have a new one with Gary Lucas starting in a a week or so. And um, we're just looking for artists who want to lead collaborations with their fans. And it's a great way to engage. I mean, I'm sure you have questions, but I'm chewing your ear off. No, not at all. I mean, I definitely (laughs) want to know all the things like, so you started with a co-founder, is that right? Yes. So my co-founder is my partner who is Ah. my partner in real life. It literally, just like every good startup, we sat at the corner bar and we had this idea on a napkin. We wrote it down. It's always a napkin. Yeah. It's a napkin. (laughs) Uh, And we've got the napkin, you know, Ah, so one day when, you know, but that that's how it came about. And then we went to Brad from the dummies and we're like, what do you think about this? Like, would you do this? And I mean, to be honest with you, we did it you know, we're both artists. So like we knew nothing about building technology and really did it the dumbest way that you possibly could. (laughs) We, you know, people gave us money. We raised the money, we built it. And then we used, you know, a real rock star to test it in public with his fans. Oh my gosh. So we are just super lucky that it didn't, you know, how did it go? (laughs) It was, um, you know, we didn't even know enough to be worried. Honestly, mm-hmm. we, we um, put it out there. And I mean, we were lucky because we found a team in Boston that, you know, their passion was music. And um, well, actually, the owner of this company, this development agency, his passion was music. And then he had a team that was just, I guess, in the place of like, they were the junior people. And it and and they were ready to move up to the next level. So he gave it to them and he gave us an amazing deal and they did an incredible job built like so much more than we really could have afforded. Mm. And, um, and it was great. And so what happened is on like on the day that we launched, um, you know, Brad put it out on his socials and um, we, so basically, so when you put technology out, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I definitely did not know this. You put it out and it shows up in in different in different places. It'll show up at different times. So mm-hmm. the development agency told us, OK, it's live. And we're like hitting refresh, refresh. We're like, where is it? And it just wasn't showing up 
in New York yet, but it turned out when we finally saw it, like two hours later, it, from people from around the world had been submitting lyrics. They had built profile pages. They were voting. They were commenting. And then on day two, people actually paid to participate because they pay and they don't pay a lot of money. They pay between 49 and 79 cents to submit a lyric. So oh it's God. not okay. a lot. Yeah. But um, it's enough to keep the trolls out. It's enough yep. to make it a nice experience. It's enough to encourage people to actually craft something rather than like, you know, the direct that you see on Twitter, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, so you can actually, and that, that was the big question. Can you write a good song like this? Like we didn't know if it would work or what. And, you know, we have like 40 songs and they're good. They're really wow. good. Well, I mean, couldn't the artist, the artist has the final say, right? Could they be just like, no, no, no. You know what I mean? For like all the things that come in. Yes. And sometimes okay. they do. Like Brad, actually, one day he scolded people and I was like, oh my gosh, do we want to be that mean? <laughs> um, but he's like, they're my fans. They know I'm tough. Uh, so and it was true. they loved it. Um, but it, yeah, the artist has the final say. They can take a lyric verbatim. They can take it. Uh, and tweak it. They can use it kind of as inspiration for something else. So, um, and they can take bits and pieces from other, from different people's lyrics and mm. meld them together. Like I like this particular word. Yeah. That they used versus it's got more nuance or whatever. Yeah. That makes right. sense. Right. Right. But at the end of the day, yes, our total goal is serving the song and, um, and the artist. So we want the artist to be proud of the song. We want them to love the song. We want them to sing the song and record the song and put it out there. So, and and that's the creative process. You know, we're actually seeing the, the journey that an artist goes through and it's magical. Mm. You know, the fans absolutely freak out and, you know, they, the artist looks like, you know, we put them on a pedestal and you see the magic of them really creating something special. And, you know, the fans are really deeply invested in it. So oh, it's for sure they're invested in it. They were involved in the process. That's the yeah. best way. Now, does this, what does this start with? Does it start with nothing like blank slate? Do they come in and like, here's a melody. We're writing lyrics to this. It's whatever the artist wants. So, okay. you know, we literally, our only rule at Hookist is that we have no rules. Uh -huh. Like, we don't tell the artists what to do. We don't tell them who to pick. We don't tell them anything. Like you get to do whatever you want. I mean, I don't, as an artist, I don't want somebody to tell me what to do, especially if I'm doing it in public, Yeah, you know, like sure. I want to be in total control of it. And so we totally respect the creative process and the artists can do whatever they want. So like with Gary Lucas, you know, he's a, you know, he's a Grammy nominee. He wrote um, Grace with Jeff Buckley, you know, the seminal record. Rolling Stone called it, you know, one of the best records of all time. And mm -hmm. it was David Bowie's favorite record. You know, so he's an incredible writer. And he so he gives us and, and he's an incredible guitar player. Like he was called a modern guitar miracle by The New York Times. I think it was. Wow. Um, and it's crazy to watch him play guitar. So he, he gives us a guitar part. And like the first time he wrote a song with us, he actually gave us, it was for the 25th anniversary of grace. And he gave us a guitar part that he wrote for Jeff Buckley for Jeff to write the lyrics, but Jeff died. Oh, I know it was chilling. It ah. was chilling. So it was, you know, incredible. And we wrote this beautiful song and then we have a team that, um, will often, uh, shoot a video for us and it's a beautiful video the song is called dance of destiny we have the video on our youtube channel mm. and it hooks under the our song section um so so it can be that the artist can uh give us a instrumental they can give us one line like we just finished a song with two songwriters jane Sachs and chris robbins um their songwriting duo in nashville and jane came up with a title called missing things and the first line and then we wrote to that and, um, but a, you know, a, a fan had an idea, like originally it was missing things. Her idea was like, it was going to be kind of, she thought it was going to be, you know, some kind of love story, but it ended up being about, um, dementia and it's oh. a beautiful, you know, very country song about, um, you know, the, the experience of a son and a mother realizing that the mother's like, 
missing things mm. and it's really beautiful it's yeah, incredible so it's you know we do tons of stuff for charity so that's part of it as well you know um but so the artist comes up with a theme for the song i think that's kind of where you're going they come up with a theme for the song um and then people write to it so they there may be lyric there may be one lyric there may be um instrumental there may be nothing whatever you want now, does the artist have to have fans to bring to this experience? Or have you guys built up a, a group of people that just love doing this and they'll write to anyone's song? Yes, both. Okay. I mean, obviously your fans are going to appreciate this more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But um, we have a community that writes with us and um, they're there for mostly everyone. Like we have an international community. So we just wrote a song with um Jill Sobule and oh. it became a very American song it actually was about um disinformation oh that sounds American yes <laughs> yeah and and one of the lines like one of the first lines was um the American underground so so there were a lot of people I think in the end our international community kind of didn't participate in that because I uh, felt like, oh, I don't want to be America bashing in public yeah um, you but know. Americans can certainly America bash. Yes. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people did. And it yeah. was interesting because disinformation, you know, both sides don't like disinformation. So it actually became a bipartisan mm. song, which was really kind of fascinating. Hmm. Um, so it can be anything. And but a lot of them are for charity or for, you know, some kind of good cause, whether it's, you know, like somebody in your band is sick. You know, we can do uh. that kind of thing. And we have done that. So um those are, you know, really powerful songs. We did one with Paul Williams, you know, the president of ASCAP for a, mm. a charity called Facing Addiction. Wow. So when you say it's for charity, does does the charity use the song or the money that's raised is for charity or both? Uh, both, really. Uh, and the artists can decide how much they want to give to charity. And okay. we, if the artist gives to you know, to charity, we give to charity as well. So basically what we do, like the financials of it, we, um, so people, as I said, people pay between 49 and like 79 cents to submit a lyric. And, and so basically the artist comes up with a theme for the song. They shoot a little iPhone video, very casual. The whole point is to give them a behind the scenes experience. So right. some people are like, oh, do I have to have hair and makeup? It's like, no, actually. Like Ellen Reed from Crash Test Dummies, she did it in her bathrobe, no makeup. You know, sometimes she'd say, I haven't even brushed my teeth, you know, with a cup <laughs> of coffee. And it was like as intimate an experience as it possibly could That's be. Cool. You know, the fans loved it. Um, but they shoot a little iPhone video and they basically, and we call it an inspiration video where they invite their fans to write an original song with them at Hookist. They tell them what the inspiration or theme for the song is. And they say, okay, so go to hookist.com and submit what you think would make the best first line or couplet in a song about, you know, celebrating recovery. That's what Paul Williams song was about. Mm. And um, people do that. They submit their line. I mean, some people submit 50 and 60 lines, you know, with the big fans really, you know, we have whales that spend, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars over the course of a collaboration. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. So it really can add up. And that's why you definitely want to invite your super fans to participate. Mm -hmm. You know, they're gonna freak out. Um, and then our community is excited to discover your your music as well. Right. So People can also, they can vote, they can comment, they can invite their friends to vote for them. They can build a profile page. So, you know, if you, you know, like you would on a MySpace or, you know, I'm dating myself, but, you know, on your Facebook <laughs> or your Instagram, you know, you can build a, a profile page so people can get to know you and um, get to know what your musical inter interests are and that kind of thing. And you can, an artist, you know, aspiring artists can link to their Spotify or their YouTube or whatever channel they want to as well. Ah, so, so there's some discovery there of you, from your community discovering new artists. Totally. And for every artist, we build a profile page for them. Like every artist that leads a collaboration, we mm -hmm. build a special profile page for them so that our community can discover their music. So we link to, like, we have a lot of photos so we can get to know, you know, you. And um, we link to your website, to your Spotify, to any songs that you want us to link to, your YouTube channel and any specific videos that you want to be linked to. So we, our goal is to help you sell more music, mm -hmm. uh, get more fans. If you have a Patreon, we link to that, you know, and we, you know, we have photos, so it looks nice. I think it's a whole, you know, 
beautiful profile page custom built for you. Right. Um, so that we can do all of that. We can help you, you know, grow your fan base, all of that, sell more music, sell tickets. We link to your tickets, that whole, whole, whole deal. Very cool. Very cool. And can you, as the artist, like, does it have to be more of like a universal theme or like, what if the artist wants to write something that's more like in a very like specifically spiritual vein, like say, you know, Christian or pagan or, you know, does it need to be something that's going to appeal to everybody? No, I mean, we, no, we, we, I, as I said, we, our only rule is that we have no rules. You can pick whatever you want. I mean, I would encourage like nothing hateful. Oh yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> like, cause that's just going to ruin the vibe. And like, I'll be honest, it sounds really corny, but hookist is like, so many people we talk about it as like the nice place on the internet because mm -hmm. our people are good to each other they're excited for each other when someone else wins they and that's the thing so every time an artist chooses a winning lyric they shoot a new iphone video where they say wow. like okay john smith i got a shout out for you i liked what you submitted you know Susie, i liked what you submitted janet i liked what you submitted oh, but so cool. you know brie I loved yours and I'm gonna use it as a first line in the song. And then mm -hmm. just like in your, you know, what we're looking at you right now, there's a guitar sitting right behind you. You know, Paul McCartney grabs his guitar and sings your line. Oh my gosh, that's crazy, right? Yeah, exactly. And your head explodes, right? <laughs> it's wow. the ultimate fan experience. So, you know, of course you're gonna share that video all over your socials, but everyone else in the community does too, because like mm -hmm. they feel like they're a part of this process mm -hmm. and they're like, I'm writing a song with Paul McCartney or, you know, whoever it is. And, you know, I mean, they absolutely freak out. So it's a great way to get a lot of new content. And every week the artist chooses a new winning lyric building on what's already been established. So that's so how long does this go on for? Eh, like it, it can vary. Like Chris Barron from the spin doctors, it went on for like three months. Wow. He, he, it's like an eight minute song, <laughs> oh my but um, you could do it in six weeks. You could do it in, you can do a fast one in four weeks. You can do it, you know, every day for a week, if you want, okay. you'd make more money, the longer it is. Um, and you get more exposure and let's face it. Like, I think the big thing is one of the big things is that, you know, we're creating, helping you create original content. Like it gets hard. You've got a new record coming out. Like how many different ways can you come up with to say like, I have a new record. I have a new record. Uh-huh. That's true. I have my new record. You know, it's not that it gets at a certain point. Like I get it. You've got a new record as a fan, but you know, you got to keep promoting it. So here's a way to promote it in a totally authentic way. That is, you know, you're not hawking something you're, you know, promoting it and you're saying, and by the way, I have a new record. Did you check out my new record? Let me know what you think about my new record at the mm -hmm. end of this or at the beginning of it or whatever. And we promote it too. Like, obviously all of these videos, we're sharing these videos and we're going to say like, and check out, you know, so-and-so's like we have impossible Kings right now. Actually, that's my partner's band. Mm -hmm. uh, he, they have a new record coming out and um, we're promoting it. But we promote everyone's new, like Jill Sobiel just had a, she has a show coming out. Uh, uh, she was in a musical in LA and now she has another show that she wrote here in New York and we promote it. So we're going to help you in every way that we can on our social channels um, and on our platform. That's very, very cool. And have you had a lot of uh, independent artists? Because I mean, there are definitely people that listen to this podcast that are more established, but there's also a lot of indie artists. Have you had all the gamut? Yep, totally. We have had, you know, Paul Williams, Crash Test Dummies, like those big ones, Jack mm -hmm. Temps, you know, Peaceful, mm -hmm. he wrote Peaceful, Easy Feeling, 42 mm -hmm. times platinum. So huge, you know, really successful guys and gals, um, but also, you know, independent artists. In fact, we have um, uh, M Morgan Miles wrote an incredible song with oh, us. Oh, I've, I've actually interviewed her on my podcast before. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. See, and she's amazing, right? We love yeah. her. And you can see on our all of our social channels, she's on The Voice right now. And she oh. actually, was the, you know, she got four chairs. Uh, John Legend said, you know, I think this was the best audition I have ever seen on the show. And, you know, we're promoting that for her because she's amazing. And she wrote this beautiful song with us. It's called Contagious, if you want to check it out. And it's about making love contagious. Mm -hmm. You know, we wrote it during the uh, pandemic, obviously. Oh, of course. 
great. I love it. <laughs> but, you know, there was, uh, we don't care what you write about. We don't care. You know, we hope you write something compelling and inclusive because I think that serves everyone better. Mm-hmm. But um, no, we don't care about it. And we um, don't care if you're independent. We don't care if you, I mean, if you have no, you know, if you are not active on social media, those are the people that we really would not right. encourage because you're not going to do this well. You know, like if you don't care about social media, this is social media. But if you care about social media and you know, understand the value of engaging with your fans, this is going to be amazing for you because your fans are going to freak out. And Morgan's yes. is totally freaked out. Uh, but we have tons of, you know, like Kelsey Kulik, you know, we uh, did a song with her. We did the Springs. Um, a lot of, we are in a, uh, an accelerator in Nashville. It's sponsored by the Country Music Association and the Nashville Entrepreneur Center to support startups that are innovating in the music space and supporting supporting artists and helping them deal, you know, with this new environment. Um And uh, so we have a lot of artists from Nashville, but totally up and coming, you know, the Brothers Landreth, actually, I think they had like 200 uh, followers at the time that Mm -hmm. we wrote a song with them. And now they're, you know, doing amazing. You know, Mm -hmm. they're incredible. Bonnie Raitt just actually recorded one of their songs. Oh, wow. And they won um, the Juno Award for Best New Songwriters. Mm. Wow. But that was before we wrote with them. So no, right. if you get social media, you'll get this and we're into it, you know? Got it. Now, the one big question that I had as soon as I heard about what this is and how it works, it was like, how do you deal with the royalties, right? Once the song is done, I'm assuming that anyone that submits lyrics has to say like, I don't claim any rights over this song. Well, you no, no, no. You don't have to give up your rights at all. Okay. In fact, oh my God, we would never do that. That was, it was our, it, it was very interesting in the beginning of this because we went around um, like our attorney, we have two attorneys. One is um, the general counsel for the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. So we went, we made sure to, everything is structured so that songwriters will mm-hmm. like it and be respected and um and, and I'm an artist and my partner's an artist. We would never, never, never take your art and say, mm, I'm going to make money and you don't get any. Um, so we we created on top of building a music startup, which is about the most insane thing to do in the world. We then created a publishing company so that we could then pay people whose lyrics make it into the song. So if you submit a lyric, you own it forever. Oh, we do not own your lyric, but if your lyric is chosen to be a part of the song, we're on the copyright and you get paid for it. So you don't get like we tried, tried, tried to get publishers to tell us that it was OK, that they didn't mind having, you know, 20 people from around the world that they don't know on a copyright with their artist. Uh-huh. They were not buying it. Yeah. They were, so what they said was and this is what the Nashville songwriters Hall of Fame, our attorney, who's the general counsel there, suggested was that we create a publishing company. So we split the royalties uh, 50-50 with the artist. And then with our portion, we pay the users whose lyrics make it into the song. So as an artist, to put out that song, you only have to deal with Hookist. Uh, So it's just a conversation in that way. But no, we totally respect your art and we pay you for, you know, in the same way, you know, we lay it out exactly in the terms and conditions, both in legal ease and in English, mm. because we don't want to trick anybody. I don't want anyone to feel bad. And we definitely want people to feel like, oh my God, I wrote a song with, you know, yeah, that's just awesome. But I, I kind of didn't think that could work. Like I, I was like, how can they deal with you have 30 people that submitted lyrics that got chosen or even words? And like, how do you handle that? But obviously you've already looked into all of that and you've got it figured out. It was hellacious. It was, I'm sure I was like, there's just no way. How can this be? People must just give up their right to that lyric. You know, they don't No, they don't. So you own it. uh, I mean, once you, if it's chosen to be a part of the song, like that's when you uh, can't, you know, use it again. Makes sense. Um, But But then you're part of a song that's going to be published. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And it's being published by like a well-known artist. So, Mm -hmm. 
it's um yeah it's fun and it's yeah no uh, that was a big thing for us because some other people were saying to us like we went around and they're like nope you you gotta make people sign away their rights and i was both my my partner and i were like oh my god i'll die i can't do it oh my gosh yeah, that's great like see i just assumed that that was part of the deal that is so great that you figured out a way around that yeah, it was, it nearly killed us and it was so wow. expensive to do, but there was, you know, like it wouldn't be good karma. No, you know? you're like, this is non-negotiable. We have to figure this out. We had to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. so yeah. and so how does Hookus get paid? I know you said you're the publisher for half of it, but how, like, do you get a percentage of the amount that people are submitting I always ask this about startups because I'm always like worried, like how, how are you guys paying yourselves? <laughs> Cause I know you're always worried about the artists and making sure that people feel like they have a, a stake and they're getting paid and you want to make sure the artists are getting paid for their work and all that. But then like, I want you guys to continue. So what is, how do you guys fund yourselves? I know. Well, uh, that's an excellent question. Um, we have not taken a salary in this entire time that we've mm. built it total labor of love and um we just believe in it so mm -hmm. you know my partner does run a recording studio here in new york and he, so he records most of the songs uh you know with the artist um that that come through um and and then he record you know he 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 yeah, i was up. wondering about that so he does help get the songs recorded once they're done Yes. Yes. Cool. And then, you know, sometimes like, so with Chris and um, Jane, who just finished their song on Monday, Chris actually has a recording studio in Nashville or in Knoxville, actually. And he, um, he and his team are doing that one all on their own. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, sometimes like in, sometimes like with Morgan's song and with Kelsey Kulik's song, we, we had them record the vocals in Nashville at a studio that we know. And then um, they worked together with Terry, my partner here in New York, and he, you know, did all the music. Um, and then we put it out that way. That's cool. But you don't have anything built into the structure to like, you know, keep a portion to keep Hookus <gasps> running. Oh, for us? Oh, yes. Oh, no, yes. we do. Okay. Sorry, I got off tan off there uh, on a tangent. Um, yes, we do. We take 50%. So we split everything essentially 50-50. Not everything. We take 50% of the proceeds of the collaboration. We split okay. it 50-50 with the artist. Got and it. we, you know, do take a cut of the publishing as well. So we pay the users with our 50% and we take a piece. Um and we're building more features and more opportunities for artists to make money and we'll, you know, take a piece of it. We do also have a tip jar mm. um, that, you know, but we don't take a piece of that. We just, you know, take, uh, we just cover the fees for the, you know, PayPal and right. gateway. Cause that just feels like gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like, I don't want to take your tip. Yeah, no, totally. And you know. Did you say you guys, you, you can now run multiple collaborations at once? Yes, we can hold. So that was our original vision, a collaborative songwriting festival, mm. you know, where different artists from different genres are writing songs with their fans, like older artists, legacy artists, younger artists, you know, up and coming, established Everyone can grow their fan bases, everyone. And then it gives fans the opportunity to discover new music and get, you know, like unprecedented insight into the creative process of their favorite artists. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like you come for one artist, but, you know, in the same way as you go to, you know, Coachella, you know, you discover new music and you, you know, meet new people. And that's the part of it, too. It's a very social experience. Yeah. So you make friends on this platform as well. Mm, I love it. I love, I love the combination of all of those things. It's, I, I feel like I need to try it now. This sounds so Me cool. Too. That's so cool. Well, how can people, um, I know I'm assuming it's hookus.com. Is that right? Is that how they check it out? And are you guys on socials? Can they connect with you there and kind of see what you guys are sharing that's happening? Yep, totally. We're on, yeah, we're, we're just starting TikTok. Mm. So if there's any TikTok artists out there, we're really looking for I that. I feel like this is very TikTok worthy for sure. Oh yeah. I think so too. I know. I just, you know, sometimes we are a small team and right. the bandwidth, like I feel I like I get it. 
You know, where you're just like, I'm going to wait to see if this one's going to stick before yep. I, and I guess it's sticking. It's so definitely I- sticking. So <laughs> is it, is it at Hookist at all of those places? Yes. On Instagram, we're at Hookist Music, okay. um, but you'll see our logo. You know, it's like a big blue color splash with a treble clef in the middle. Um, but we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and we are just starting with Twitter. I mean, uh, with uh, TikTok. TikTok. Awesome. You guys go check it out. Hookist.com. Definitely try it out, see what it's like, you know, be a collaborator and maybe you'll want to bring your fans over there and, and do a collaboration. It sounds like a really innovative, interesting process. So you guys check it out. Hookus.com. Thank you so much, Meredith. This has been really interesting. And I just (laughs) love this model. It's, it's something that I wasn't sure how it could ever work, but you guys have made it work. So I love it. Well, thank you. We weren't sure how it was going to work either, <laughs> but where there's a will, there's a way. We That's were right. And it's a, you know, it really is a labor of love. So we're totally psyched about it. And just, we welcome you. My, my email is Meredith at hookus.com. Anybody can email me if you're interested or DM me and, you know, we're looking for artists. We're, we're at this place right now where we have this platform and we're able to hold multiple collaborations and we're looking for artists who want to do it. So let mm-hmm. me know. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with our listeners. Ah, you're a doll. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.